<laughs> Does anyone know a good plumber? I fucked up one of those stupid ritual things that everyone's doing, and now my shower is leaking, and there's some faceless guy in my kitchen. My landlord comes tomorrow, and he's going to kill me. Especially because I also have a cat, and I'm not even supposed to have pets. It all started when I was drunk messaging a girl on Tinder, and she said that the only way we would meet up is that if I did this weird ritual thing where I summon a ghost or some shit. I think she called it mea culpa or something. Actually, her exact message was... <clears throat> The decaying flesh will not rest. I am the Alpha and Omega. I have seen the burning cities consume the earth. <sighs> Our souls meet when darkness spills. Mea culpa, mea culpa, mea culpa, whatever. She was a weird chick. At least I think she was a girl. I couldn't really see her face. Her picture was just a black background with two shiny dots that kind of looked like eyeballs. You could sort of see some features, but it looked like her face was gray, and I couldn't really see her mouth, but she did have really good skin. I wasn't about to rally for a pizza face. So anyway, I weighed the pros and cons of spooky rituals versus trampoline booty as best as I could on five shots of Patron. And it was totally worth it. I set my cell phone to 3.26am, but since my phone is a 2005 Motorola Razor that was dropped in the toilet several times, it went off at 4am. FUCK! I decided to go through with the ritual anyway. I was also supposed to have a friend during the thing, but my bestie recently got incarcerated for selling heroin on the corner of Patterson Park and Eastern Avenue. Shout out to my main man, Roscoe. Anyway, I sat up and turned off my alarm, but the moment I turned it off, I drunkenly passed out again. I woke up 20 minutes later and actually got out of bed this time, stumbling around the room in the dark because apparently you're not supposed to turn on the lights because if you do, a ghost will pop out. <laughs> I was supposed to find a candle and light it, but my hangover just made me trip over one of the several candles that I had placed on my floor, and eventually I gave up and flipped the lights on, grabbing a candle from my desk. I squinted out my window to see what my ghetto-ass Baltimore neighborhood looked like at 4.20 a.m. The street was empty except for some rando wearing a black robe and a giant pointy black hat. He was staring up at me through the window, and I couldn't really see his face, but you know, Baltimore has gone to the fucking dogs. First gang wars, and now an updated KKK! For God's sakes. I lit the candle and looked at my phone. I was supposed to knock on my bedroom door 66 time, and the 66 knock was supposed to time on 406, but since I had fucked everything else up, I just did a shave and a haircut knock on the door, and then walked into my hallway. My bedroom door is opposite the stairs, and looking down the dark stairwell was pretty spooky. I thought I saw something move at one of the lower steps. For the next step, I was supposed to close my eyes and walk forward while chanting mea culpa, mea culpa, mea culpa, which is Italian for my culpa, which is probably some kind of shitty Italian car. I tried to close my eyes and walk forward while talking about Italian cars, but my cat, Fish Sticks, ran under my feet, and I ended up tripping over him and falling down the flight of stairs. At some point, the stupid candle went out and I flailed down the stairs, but I was too concussed to care. I rolled up from the ground, groaning, and decided that I was just going to continue to go through the motions, which meant hiding in a closet and waiting for the ghost to play hide and seek with me. I chose the kitchen pantry because I had some open potato chips in there, so I made my way back. As I stumbled, I heard several soft whispers behind me. I spun around, hoping that I was right about fish sticks knowing how to talk, but there was no one there, except for the figure standing in the corner. I stopped, blinked, and it was gone. I really needed to lay off the Patron. As I honed in on the closet, the alcohol and concussion finally caught up with me, and I stumbled to a stop, doubling over and vomiting watery Patron all over my kitchen floor. Fuck! My ass was landlord grass. The hellish combination of alcohol, concussion, post-vomit, and a looming eviction notice caused my emotions to go haywire, and I unleashed a violent sob, mucus and tears rivering down my face. But then I heard a noise outside the kitchen. My eyes fell on the kitchen window, and I spied that stupid gang member KKK dude in my backyard still staring at me. I must have looked like an idiot weeping in front of my kitchen pantry, too ashamed to confront him. I just crawled into the pantry and shut the door. It was so cold in there, I damn near froze my man titties off. My air conditioner was probably broken. I definitely needed to call the landlord, but that would mean sedating fish sticks and stuffing him in a suitcase under my bed. 
At this point, I realized that I needed to reevaluate my life. Maybe I shouldn't drink as much. Maybe I should just give fish sticks to a good home. Maybe I should find women with intellect and pose. Maybe I should move out of my shit neighborhood where KKK people roam around at 4 a.m. After going through an entire existential crisis in my pantry, I decided to say fuck it and end the stupid ritual. That Tinder girl wasn't even that hot anyways, and besides, I still had like 70 more ritual things to complete, which included lighting 8 more candles, stabbing a Japanese doll, and spinning around in a circle while screaming, YOU'RE IT! YOU'RE IT! This was all supposed to culminate in me going to my basement, sitting in front of a mirror and looking into the mirror, but not actually looking into it, which made absolutely no fucking sense. And as I got up to open the pantry door, I heard a low moan coming from behind the door. I froze. I prayed to God that it wasn't my landlord. I cracked open the door to see the gang member KKK guy standing in the kitchen, staring at me. I finally got a good look at him, and he definitely didn't have a face. I guess getting your face taken away is part of a gang ritual now. He didn't react to my presence, he just stared. I didn't know how the hell to deal with gang members or faceless KKK members, so I just stared back. We did this for about five minutes before I slowly inched out of the kitchen and back upstairs. He turned to watch me as I went, but he didn't move. So after that, I went up to my bathroom to take a shower, and now my shower head is leaking, which I blame on the fucking ritual. So, if you guys know any good plumbers in the Baltimore area, I would really appreciate the help.